Back every night at 6 p.m., we are taking you deeper into the impact of the coronavirus. And tonight, I am joined by Dr. Richard Myers, the president and science director for Hudson Alpha Institute for Biotechnology. We understand that research is being done right here in Huntsville to establish an immunity test for the virus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, sure, we're doing this, and many, many other people are doing this. It's a hard problem when you're infected by an infectious disease. You your immune system starts reacting to it, and almost surely we're making antibodies that help protect us against SARS-CoV-2 once we've been infected with it. The problem is we don't really know for sure whether you do get immunity or how long you would have immunity, so we need to be a little careful with it. People would love to do this kind of a test because maybe you could go back to work if you knew that you were immune to it. The problem is while there are many tests that you can buy out there uh, right now, Many of these are known to be inaccurate and maybe even, I mean, so inaccurate that, that it would be worse than throwing a dart at a dartboard. So we need to understand that and make them accurate as possible, but then also understand what it means even if we are absolutely sure you're carrying antibodies. So one of our, one of our multiple um, COVID-related projects is to try to develop those kinds of tests so that, so that they can be done also at a very high throughput, meaning many, many, many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of tests. And that um, uh, is likely months off, but not, maybe not, not long, long term off uh, to be able to get something like that done. Many others are doing it too. Again, we're sharing data so that we don't make the same mistakes that are same, run into the same uh, uh, blind alleys that you might have run into in another lab. There's been a lot of speculation about this virus being linked to a lab in China. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he doesn't think COVID-19 could have been man-made, and he's mentioned the mutations the virus went through. Have you seen these major mutations with this virus? So we haven't sequenced the virus ourselves here at Hudson Alpha yet. We are doing some of those, but I know the data that are being gathered around the world. Uh, and uh, I think it's very unlikely this was a man-made uh, virus in a laboratory. Uh, um, uh, and the way you can trace that is by looking at the mutations in various places. So for instance, we know that, w that it probably did arise uh, originally in Wuhan. Uh, you get transfer of uh, viruses from animals to people sometimes. That's happened in flu and other things as well. Uh, because we're so mobile, uh, it moved around the world really rapidly. And as you probably know, most of the cases in, the, in New York, uh, in the city, actually around the, the whole state, uh, came out of Europe, not originally from the, the original uh, Wuhan cases. So this is helping us track that epidemiology part of that is really important for us. It'll help us understand this one, to contain it as much as we can, and to be ready for the next one should it happen. And does it appear that this particular strain, COVID-19, is changing faster or slower than other coronaviruses? That's a great question. And in fact, it looks like it's mutating even a little slower than flu virus does. So fortunately, at least we're not dealing with an extremely highly mutating one, which would make it even harder to, to, to deal with. The real problem is the fact that it, two, two real problems, it's really infectious and you don't know that you have symptoms for, uh, in fact, most people don't get symptoms, so it's, and, and yet they're spreading it. So that's been, those two things have been the reason why this has become such a pandemic. So then how would a mutation change the process of creating a vaccine? So you might know that we uh, do a new, develop a new flu vaccine every year. It's the same virus, that's, uh, but the, the virus mutates, and it'll mutate and get selected for uh, uh, sort of escaping the immune system. So every year they try to anticipate what is likely the new strains coming out and develop the vaccine based on that. I think it'll be exactly the same thing for, for uh, COVID as well, to actually understand the virus enough to be able to make uh, a new vaccine each year. And the new vaccine does not have to start from scratch. You already know a lot about it, so it should be a lot faster. I'm really hoping, and I believe most people believe, that we will develop a vaccine and we'll be able to monitor it that way. We'll still have a lot of people get it, even when, even when everybody gets vaccinated, and hopefully everybody will. Uh, some people still escape, uh, sorry, the, the vaccine doesn't work 100% of the time on, on everybody. So you, we need what we call herd immunity by getting as many people get the vaccine. And then 
-hmm. We don't know whether this is seasonal. It doesn't appear to be. We don't really know if it'll change in the summer versus uh, uh, the winter like, uh, like uh, flu does, but we'll be following it that way. So. Well, doctor, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the treatment drug that's giving people hope.